John, come on over here. We're, we're, we're at Perchville, USA, up here off Tawas. This is Tawas Bay. I'm with Craig McShane and Steve. Hi. Nine-year-old Steve who's scooping out the holes. Now, what we've already done is got four holes in a row here because I tell you, it's cold. That wind is coming in from the north. Are you cold? Yeah, my ears are about <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, I know it, and I know Steve is. But we're gonna set up a shanty, which is gonna be one of the slickest things you've ever seen, homemade here by Craig. So you stay tuned. This is very practical right down your alley. So stay tuned, it's time for the Practical Sportsman. Everybody has their own style of ice shanty or ice sled. Now this is a combination here. This is ingenious. Where do you see this, this put up? Craig built this and he has actual skis on the bottom. Now these skis are real handy because uh, they really slide along the ice or the snow. Ice or snow. Okay, Craig, let's, um, let's slide this baby off. And where do we want, how far do we go with this in? Well, let's bring her over a little more. Fred. This is the size of hook we're going to use for setting in the tip up for pike fishing, putting a minnow on. But first of all, we have to find how deep it is. Now, you think it's how deep, Craig? I'd say about 20 foot, probably. Okay, so we'll put the clip the depth finder onto here. That's just like an alligator clip and drop it down into the hole to the tip of, boy, that's freezing up already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to maintain them throughout the afternoon or... I just skimmed that off a second ago. Okay, we're on bottom now. Okay, you're on the bottom. Now, you have a way of, how far do you fish off the bottom for a Usually, pike? usually do is I'll pinch off at the water, draw the line up, I'll say about two feet. Uh -huh. Usually is a pretty good number. Then I take and loop my line and pull it back through like that. And what I have here is a regular piece of a match. Just a paper match? Paper from... match or paper matches are the best because after, after a while you want to get that out of there because your depths always vary from mm -hmm. different spot to different spot and those matches pull out real easy. Go ahead and show how, how you do that if you want to change the depth. Okay, you just pull your match out, maybe. It's easier when it's not so there. cold. Now after your match comes out, then your knot pulls right back out. Okay. You don't wind so up with you, that. You want to tie that, that's kind of a, a slip knot type mm -hmm. of thing. Steve, how about, we'll need that match back. Put that in there. Now that's gonna mark pulls the depth, out. so when we put the minnow back down, we know that it's two feet off of the bottom. Now we have, we have our minnows right here. Uh, Got a little bit of weeds down there, that's good. Yeah, now we haven't voted on who's going to reach into that cold water and <laughs> pick out. But you see, I don't know which I minnow to get. Scoop. I have no. I will. Scoop Here's a scoop. There we go. That's what we need. Okay, I'll scoop. Boy, they're all lively. Nice size. I usually hook them right at the dorsal fin here. Mm -hmm. Like that. Now we're ready to launch them and hope for the best. Okay, now we're going to. There's four of us out here fishing, because John, you'll be fishing too, right? You bet. Yeah, I'll just pick up the camera now and then. Right next to the heater. Right next to the heater. So we're going to have four tip-ups set out, and then we'll have four jigging lines. Or one person may not jig, they may be in the spearing shanty, but that's two lines each. Now we're feeding this Dacron line. You like Dacron for? Well, I have a very, uh, various lines. Okay. These are, these are hand-me-down tip-ups. <laughs> oh, yeah? I've uh, acquired them from friends of mine to build new ones. Greg, put his pussy gloves on. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Here's my son here. Line's all run off. Oh, it's Steve. run off. There's something there. Can Give it a crank, Steve. Yank it. Set it. Got anything? Yeah, it's biting. We got something. Uh oh, I think it took our bait off. Think so? Nope, we got it. Had a little bite there. There it is. There's the match, so we know we got about another 15 feet to go. Oh, this is great. It's had any... Oh, right! Way to go, Steve! -er. Way to go! Hey, you didn't get lucky. 
Well, unfortunately, it's uh, not legal size. But hey, it's big. We got one. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty it's close. Bag. We're gonna need your little handy dandy uh, degorger. <laughs> it, it took Look the hook. Get my gloves on. What we have here, for those of you who aren't familiar with these Michigan fish, this is a northern pike, not a musky. Pike has the white spots on the dark body. Has to be 24 inches. No, not not yet. Not until April. That's right. Not, not until April. But I don't think this is 20 inches either. I think. This oh, is, I'd say it is. You think it's 20? Yeah. Yep. I'd say it's just 20. Well, we'll find out. You have a measure? Um, nope. That, that, that doesn't look 20 to me. Does it look no. 20 to you? He's a little. Wouldn't get much meat out of that one. Okay, that's the spreader. Open up the jaw. He took that took that minnow all the way down. So go ahead and. Well, we're talking king size hemostats. Yeah. You can tell whose wife works at the hospital. There we go. You keeping him? Nope. Too small. No, too small, Steve. So you want to? Still eating. <laughs> I know it's hard for you to understand, but that's the I rules. Don't th I think he's dead now. No, no he, he's off and he's gone. So there's one. Right. Hey, Craig. Yeah. yeah. He was heading that the way too. out of the bag. Okay, I'll go get the I'll go get the minnows. Okay, I gotta take the picture. That's the way we do it. <laughs> okay, Brad. Let's go over here to the fish board. Excuse us, ladies. Oh yeah. Well, take a look at this. This is Brad Potts, who's the chairman of the fishing contest here at Birchville, right? Yep, yes, sir. And we are only a few hours into Birchville. Uh, actually, an hour and a half. Really? Hour and a half into, and this is what we came with this morning already. Yeah. Uh, what's the biggest one? Uh, it'd be 26 and a quarter. We got one 26 here and 26 and a quarter. All we do is measure by length to make it a fun fishing tournament. It's uh, one perch. Not a weight type thing. One perch, yeah. The only perch that the folks caught was that one perch right there this morning. Okay, you'll have pike. I hope board. the guys that are spearing pike bring them in. They should. They, they will. We'll have four or five nice pike that are speared. Yeah. So how does this compare with last year? Uh, good. Good. As last couple years, Perchville has found the fish for us. All the local guys have gone out after the Perchville, and uh, we get a good idea where the fish are now. Wow, it's a, it's a lot of ice, and, and we've been slow up until today. Last two years in a row, Perchville's Brought a lot of fish in. Yeah. It's good, yeah. Keep it up, well, and there's a lot more to do out here. Lots, lots. Yeah. Things are getting to crank up right now. You're out here in a very entertaining event on the ice, smashing cars, oil flying, gasoline. Uh, you know, and people wonder about this environmentally. Is this depositing stuff in the bay or what? Oh, we try to clean up as much as we can. We uh, pick up all the debris and then we got oil rag soaks that we run around there and pick up all the oil and the gas and any antifreeze that's built. And we do a good job. I mean, we've had the DNR out here and they look at it and they say we're doing a great job. Is this and something been, you have to get a permit for? Yes, we have to pull a permit for this. I've been doing this for seven years now and we haven't had no complaints, no injuries. Uh, you know, we've been doing a real good job. So you actually mop up We actually mop area? up when we're done, yeah. What we do is we take the plow out there and we pick up the big debris first. Mm -hmm. and we take the plow out there and we plow everything into a pile and then we put that in the dumpster and then we go out there with these rags and clean it all up the best we can. Hmm. And we do a good job. I'll be done. You know, DNR's happy and, you know, everybody's happy. We haven't had no complaints. The crowd loves the event. Oh, they sure do. We <laughs> pull a lot of people up here. They come from all over. I tell you, this is quite an event. You have, uh, how many people come through here every year? Usually we have uh, about 200 to 250. It looks like we're gonna be over that this year. I mean, these people, you gotta admit, some of them have uh, had what I guess you'd call a warm-up drink before they're doing this. Uh, that, you know, that may have happened, <laughs> but I don't know, no matter what they had, they're gonna need more when they get out of that water. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, look at that. I mean, that water has got to be 33 degrees. It is. We cut that hole yesterday. It froze up uh, last night, and then it froze up again this morning. So there's no doubt how it's just above solid. Now, you know, when you hold an event, 
Oh boy, what you just missed. Oh, we're talking, oh, we're talking belly flop city here. What, what kind of problems does this pose insurance wise, liability wise, people out, you know, it's slippery? Well, we, we exercise all the precaution we can. Um, we have our uh, local Coast Guard auxiliary out to uh, spot the hold, and make sure we can keep track of the heads uh, that are in the water. We're as careful as we can be, but we think it's still fun. Oh, it is still fun. Look at the crowd you got here. This is, and look at these goofy people yep, coming yep. through. Here they go. <laughs> I tell you what, the only thing I can say is that experience would beat what I've been through in court the past year. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm tired of people saying I'm not going to jump in the water up at Perchville. This is ridiculous. I'm going to do it. I don't have any shoes on. I don't have any clothes on except a bathing suit, no glasses, no hat. I'm going in the water in Perchville for all you people who said I was a chicken. Watch. This dish is venison stroganoff. Now, I've never seen a stroganoff dish that has the sour cream on top. A couple of dollops on there, but it has the noodles underneath. It looks excellent. This was submitted by Annette Ward from Grand Ledge, and you brought hubby Jim along. <laughs> Jim, who said he really shouldn't be here because he's not very partial. No, I mean, he's quite partial. He's not very <laughs> impartial. Partial. Well, right. let's, let's dig into this and, and, right. and try it and to see if this meets your satisfaction. I know you haven't tasted this rendition yet. Mmm. Oh. Let me tell you, folks. I love stroganoff with the sour cream mixed in when it's all creamy. Except right now, I think I love it best when it's <laughs> on top. Isn't it normal to, to mix it in? Mm-hmm. Where'd um, you get this idea? Well, it started out as a stroganoff sandwich recipe and I modified it and mixing the regular stroganoff with this hmm. and uh, some people like to mix it before they eat it which I usually do or you can eat it with it on top like oh that. man I like it uh, as, as a little sauce on top now this venison was it marinated or what what yeah we In marinated what? overnight McCormick's marinade hmm regular flavor regular flavor yeah. right mm -hmm. and there's some mushrooms in here yeah. oh yeah and onions, and then your Worcestershire sauce and ketchup and garlic. Hmm. Now, is that marinated too? Or no, just the, just the McCormick's? The meat, just the meat. And then you mix all this yep. together, cook it for a while, uh -huh. put it on the noodles, sour cream on top. Mmm. What's a scoop on this stroganoff sandwich? <laughs> it's this, but it's served over a, a French loaf bread. Hmm. That was originally with regular beef, and then I modified it for the venison. I'll be darned. Well, Jim, do you um, do you get this venison? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about this past season? No, I struck out. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? Have a lot of beef stroganoff this year? <laughs> Apparently. But it but it'll work well with beef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you marinate it overnight and do right. the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, we'll Wards <laughs> from Grand Ledge, mm -hmm. this is Thank top you. drawer, a number one. Thank you. Thank you. Is that your favorite recipe? Oh, yeah. I'd get up in the middle of the night to eat <laughs> this dinner. <laughs> well put. Mm. Right. This recipe is featured in our February-March issue of the Practical Sportsman magazine. Last fall, when we were duck hunting up at Drummond Island, we stopped over to Harry Reinfelder's place on Manuskong Bay. And as we were chatting with him, he was saying he had a problem feeding the deer. You know, he liked to put out corn, bags of corn, and put it out for the deer to come in and watch him eat. Well, he found he would go through corn, corn, and more corn, but he still wanted to feed him and have him come in. So he came up with the idea of using some PVC pipe, and this is the key to this. It's called a sweeping Y, and what you do is you put a, oh, say a four-inch pipe up here, which is what Harry did, filled it with corn, 
and the corn comes up to this level down here and one deer can eat at a time. On the bottom, you, put, you can buy different bottoms to put on these things and, and drill some holes in it. In fact, Tim Farragon, who was with us on this trip, said he wanted to do the same thing. He didn't want to make one quite so long, but he found a piece of six inch PVC pipe, got a sweeping Y to put on it, and on the bottom, you can see the holes that need to be drilled. That's in case there gets to be some water in there so it can drain out and the corn won't rot. Now on the top, if you use a four inch pipe, you can put a coffee can over the top, or you can buy a lid to go on this six inch pipe. What you do with it, is you take it and put it up against a tree, which could be in your backyard or somewhere where you deer hunt. Take some wire or bungee cords or whatever, wrap it around, put the corn in there. The deer can come and feed one at a time. That means you can feed him corn, but it isn't going to cost you an arm and a leg. Kind of a practical tip. We have the plans and the photos for this deer feeder in the December-January issue of The Practical Sportsman. That's on page 52, The Practical Deer Feeder, thanks to Harry Reinfelder and Tim Farragon. Now for some interesting fishing data, flip to page 43. Here's a shot right here of Dave Laporte, who was fishing the end of October in Little Bay de Noc. That walleye weighed 11 pounds, 4 ounces. Now, I checked the lakes that have reported the most trophy walleye since 1984. Muskegon Lake, 174. You know why that is? Captain Mark Martin gets all of his customers to register their fish. Saginaw Bay second with 105 and on down the line. Uh, looking right next to this picture, we have a huge muskie. This was caught by Lowell Seal from Ocala, Florida. He caught this 51-inch, 31-pound muskie from Anuskong Bay at the end of September. Well, I did a check on the lakes right at the bottom here that produce the top trophy muskies. Well, Manuskong Bay turns out to be third or second with 28. Far and away, the first is Lake St. Clair with 150 trophy muskie reported. You know, I would have thought and I checked out the Detroit River, Lake Huron, and Portage Lake up in Houghton County. Hardly any muskie reported. These areas seem to be better for other fish. Portage Lake, uh, Northern Pike in particular. Now, speaking of Northern Pike, check out this fellow right here. Uh, this 40-inch, 20-pound Northern was caught by Martin Toth from Painesdale. He used a dead smelt to catch that fish. Now, dead smelt are a common winter bait, so I did a chart here checking the different types of baits and lures used for northern pike. Now, the top column here is daredevils and spoons. They really come on strong in the early summer, especially in July. Not so much the sucker minnows and uh, dead smelt. They really come on strong at this time of year in the winter. So this is the time of the year, the dead smelt, the more motionless bait work. But boy, you can catch some big northern pike on them. Now remember that photo of Keith Lutz last week who caught the biggest fish ever turned into the Shiver on the River contest? It weighed in at 12.26 pounds at the contest weigh-in station, which was the day after he caught it. Well, another guy caught one just before the contest closed at 12.27 pounds. Keith's was beat out by one one-hundredth of a pound. Who would have guessed? Well, Keith says that there have been offshore winds, this winter has been a pretty darn good one for outdoor activities. Lots of snow up north, sufficient ice for ice fishing. The temperatures have been pretty darn comfortable. I'd say there's three practical reasons you ought to get outdoors this weekend. It's a great place to be. See you next week. Okay, I'm soaking wet. It's cold. I'm standing in the snow. What do you people want? You say I'm chicken to, to jump in the water up in Perchville? No way. I did it once. I'll do it again. Watch. Here I go!